this week on Hermitcraft. Now I have to admit, most of this episode so far has been a little unhinged. I'm not sorry. Welcome to the Hermitcraft Recap. My name is Pixel Riffs. Our writer is Loy XP. Captions on this video were provided by Liara. And we've got some scary news for you right out of the gate. Cubfan135 has finished the Total Chaos minigame. So for one, this means they now have to play it, and that's going to be quite the frag fest. But another thing is that this frees up Cubfan for regular Cubfan stuff. And who oh, those waiting for Resistance Against Ren to start up are going to like this. Minor spoilers, and we'll get to all of this later, but if you saw a hot potato passed around to a hermit lately, it may just be how the crown will fall. In the meantime, here's a clip of Gemini Tay decapitating Rendog. Just, oh, I can just know, have just, it! Just, just do what you gotta do. What it takes forever! <laughs> Another skull to add to the collection! As somewhere out there, a robes Pierre's. This week, the plutocracy thickens as King Ren sets up a system to track everyone's progress from the quest hub and reward them with status. And as many people have already pointed out, it's ironic that all this started because of diamond block towers. At least this time, there's a proper house for them. All this and more in today's recap, so join us as we take a look at all the events and mishaps that occurred on the Hermitcraft server this week. Starting with Rendog, and while he's still the server's sovereign, he's got some other business to attend to. The Gigapod rocket, which landed on the Mushroom Island months ago, has been asking for a netherite block as fuel, and Ren finally delivers one. The mechanisms activate, the doors open, and it turns out the puzzle box contains another smaller puzzle box with exactly the same solution, only this time it's asking for a block which doesn't exist, at least by the that name. Genesis Block? What the heck is the Genesis Block? What Nintendo? Genesis Block, definition not found. We require assistance, Rendog. Well, Rosie, I gotta say, that does surprise me somewhat. Leaving his audience to be baffled by another Gary the Goat situation, Ren sets the record farm straight and returns to spawn to audit the quest hub. What he finds is a couple of people confused about the rulebook, but an impressive amount of completed quests. So, to celebrate his subject's achievements, he constructs the Arch of Champions, a monument where the hermits can drop off the crystals for quests they've completed, and a diamond block pillar will grow from their pedestal once they've earned a certain amount of points. Totally worth the effort, especially at night. Big shout out to some of the mad scientists in the cyber labs who helped me a little bit with the design of this thing, but um, I'm so happy with how it's turned out. We've Despite how everything seems to be going, prying gems out of Ren's crown is not the only way to make money on the server. Hypnotized scores nearly a stack of diamonds off of his Bee Goo shop. All right, we got some honey block seals. Not bad. 43 diamonds, that's not bad. He immediately spends half of it on a roof for his newest build, but still. The build is a wood farming house in his home tiger, but not the one from last week, the other one. The one from last week focused on the nether fungi and had the roof blown off for its trouble. This time everything goes off without a hitch, except for the TNT duper, because there isn't any. Just in case, and not to cheat too much, Hypno has decided to just use a dispenser with dynamite in it for the project, since it doesn't really need to move and sand is freely available. Sponges, less so. Ijevan and him had to go mug fish for those. Oh, we came prepared, Mr. Guardian. We got the milk yeah. and everything. As we already covered last week, Good Times with Scar recruits Pearlescent Moon to clean up his various chest monsters, which first and foremost means she gets to tour Scar's builds. But when it comes to confronting him about how much his mess will cost to clean up, he's a little evasive. I got 30 diamonds. Maybe some more diamonds than that too. Yeah. <laughs> okay, how about this? How about this? <laughs> mm -hmm. All of my diamonds that I have at the moment of purchase in a surprise treasure box. Okay. And I can't know what's in this surprise treasure box, can I? No, no, it's a surprise. It's obviously in its name. It's a surprise oh, treasure box. Tr true, yeah, you know. You know what? Well, I think that one's open to how many cleaning lady hours it takes. Still, Pearl rises to the challenge, and after time-lapsing the cleanup process, the bill comes due. Whether or not Scar can pay it is another matter entirely. Awesome. There's one single chest monster remains that I forgot to tell you about. Look, all right, you know, you know what? That's as far as I'm concerned. That's your own. That's your own task. Okay, you clean that up. 
There's a bit more cash on offer in the royal coffers, which is why Pearl takes on the quest of building a nether portal for the shopping district, a privilege for which she is decapitated by the king himself, before building the stylish Stargate in a pretty comprehensive showcase of both her building ability and the new blocks from recent updates. There's not a lot of rhyme or reason to this portal other than the facts that I had no idea what theme to do, so I just made up something completely on the spot. After many a year of being too preoccupied if they could, scientists have found the exact way to weaponize beatups. Thanks to server mod shenanigans, Good Times with Scar was able to put several choice voice lines from the crowning ceremony onto the goat horns, and thanks to Grian being on the server, he was able to scare Grian with them. The You'll level. speak when spoken to! <laughs> <laughs> oh, so many moms! Yeah. Creepy Voices with Scar, a brand new channel, coming soon. Unfortunately, the sounds of the dam did not dissuade Pearlescent Moon when she comes to collect on cleaning services. After calculation, all the maths shows that he definitely doesn't have the money and is not entirely sure which chest it's in. 170 <laughs> diamonds. Oh. You can pay that, right, Scar? Well, you can pay it, right? um, yes, yes, definitely. By the next episode, I'll have that paid. By the way, Pearl, by the way, if you're mm -hmm. in need of food, my shops are fully stocked. If you need to get, you know, maybe 200 stacks of cookies. That's why Scar scrambles through every royal odd job short of walking the Ren Dog. The bill is 170 diamonds, and one way to make some back is apparently to sass B00 in his own comments. Imagine being paid to comment on Hermitcraft videos. What a concept. Regardless, Pearl's effort is incredibly helpful because knowing what block is stashed where generally helps out on putting these blocks into the shape of a building. Scar speed builds through most of the main lane of his Disney street and even puts up a flag with his cat's jelly on it down the middle of the town square. Guess it is the jelliest place on earth outside of the Total Chaos minigame where the floor is literally honey. Let's go like on this block. Right, right here. <laughs> Whoops. So it's finally time to talk about that agony cube, now actually a cube, because Cubfan has put the walls in. It makes sense they'd be made of powdered snow too, because that ought to be the most painful block to work with. Nevertheless, Cub fills in the perimeter, which ensures that arrows, fireworks, and potions will make it through just fine. A fun bonus is also that the walls glow, since powdered snow lets light through it. Uh, I mean, <laughs> it looks kind of surreal. Some of the rules of the game are also filled in. It's going to be a team versus team versus team, full iron sets, and wooden swords for PvP. Maybe a slow and splintered death, but really, the primary threat here is still the dripstone falling from the sky. The players will be able to dodge them a bit better now, since Cub added a speed 2 beacon effect across the arena, but it's still no jumps, plus out the corners, Cub put in stray skeletons shooting slowness arrows through, sending a bit of a mixed message there, frankly. So now if we run into the arena here... Yeah, you can see we got slowness effects sometimes, and from the void, which is pretty cool. He starts shooting. That's awesome. All right. And yet, this is only the second Cruelist game he's playing here. Once finished with the game, Cub's immediate decision is to use the free time farming poisonous potatoes. You see, there is a rewardable quest for passing the hot potato to someone, but there isn't any copy protection on the hot potato, and that means anyone can just microwave any poisonous potato and claim the reward. So Cub renames his whole vegetable drawer and passes it out as a legit thing to a few other hermits. Basically, this is if, during the tag game, they randomly released five more Grians onto the server. Cub benefits from this none, by the way. He just wanted the Q button pressed more, apparently. By the way, if anybody asks you didn't get it from me, uh, let's just walk out of here oh. slowly, slowly, oh, okay. and uh, pretend like, like nothing happened here. If you're building with resources that don't have to be placed one bucket at a time, Joe Hills has you covered. Sorry, I'm not used to doing this while holding push to talk. So I need no to worries. hold shift to crouch for the swift sneak. I'm yep. at a slight offset angle here, and then I just go. Woo, man, that is fast. While his scale model of a scale model of a pinball machine doesn't take that many resources, the plywood walls of the macro scale megabase are going to require a lot of birchwood. Luckily, he's got enough left to play a xylophone solo for Cub Fan. That's Joe Hills. He's the man who conquers death. Yes, I love it. Joe puts some placeholder art on the side of the machine as a statement of intent more than anything else, and visits the Arch of Champions both to claim his spot and turn in the crystal for relocating his axolotl shop. 
why don't we go ahead and read it now? Oh, hey, my dudes, it's the Arch of Champions. Uh, welcome to the Arch of Champions. Add your completed server quest crystals to your uh, pedestal to become the server's ultimate uh, quest champion. Uh, how does it work? Impulse SV is a shopaholic, but not in the sense that he's compulsively shopping at other people's establishments, more that he can't stop creating shops himself. And this week he commits in a big way, time-lapsing the first stage of a mega shop that promises to be this season's Sahara. And we all know how that turns out. Ah, uh, yes, it's that part of the video where four days of my life was condensed down to one minute in about 20 seconds or so. Now I have to admit, Unhinged. While that went up, Pearlescent Moon has set up the portal to the shopping district, and Impulse laments that it spits you out looking at the back half of the Illuminate building. Honestly, on this server, at least it has a back half. Sideshow Entertainment shows up in the form of ZF catching arrows in various places, Gemini Tay swinging by for an assassination, and Impulse takes on a couple of quests for the King's Treasury, donating an enchanted golden apple and mining enough debris for a block of netherite. And I really hope it makes it safe and sound wherever it's going here because hour and a half of my life for 10 diamond blocks. That is actually not bad. That this happens slightly too late for B00, but he already got what he wanted out of Impulse. Yes, I did it. Woo! I got a hermit oh. to sing a duet with me. Wait, wait, that doesn't count. No! no, you can't do more! B Dubs is eagerly awaiting netherite blocks for the king's coffers because he's completed the royal castle build and just wanted the most valuable throne he could manage. And those of you that pointed out that the front of the castle looks like a monkey face, there's the, the teeth and the eyes and the ears. <coughs> Thanks for ruining it. Ren will have to move the rest of the furniture in himself, but there are a couple of spare rooms for his advisors, and even a beacon tower with coloured glass he can use to signal his mood, the status of the server, or whether or not the king is having a rave at the time. But back to the netherite thing. B-dubs bets on Cubfan to have a spare netherite block lying around, but Cub was too busy getting all the other minerals, so he offers B-dubs some blast mining supplies for half the prize money, which B-dubs agrees to, perhaps because he'll get to keep the quest crystal for his score at the Arch of Champions. After waffling about it for a few weeks, XB Crafted finally settles on the object to be dangled from his villager statues. It's an effigy of the Warden, implying that his civilization of giants defeated the creature and sealed it away in the deep dark long ago. And it's little, so it kind of, it's it's in keeping, like, with the, the Iron Golem that we did. Satisfied with this monumental accomplishment, XB turns his attention to the quest hub and goes to collect some more rare mob heads for the king, which means he gets all near Automata on us for a minute. So I got the quest, and now I, I I I throw the head because that is the quest. So there we go, one skeleton horse head. I will grab my crystal. Despite the rewards, though, he's probably going to wait for the next version update before he turns over an Alay head, since duplicating them isn't possible in the base version of 119. Then again, hermits can't duplicate either, but that didn't stop Gemini Tay from doing unlicensed surgery on their necks. Now I have to admit. Not sorry. An honorable warrior, Jim actually challenges folks to a duel. No armor, wooden sword, nothing short of a total chaos training. And she is surprisingly efficient. Like, I know they say slay queen, but you didn't have to go this hard. What's up, Hey! Hey, oh, wait, no, 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 no. No. <laughs> the only person who really wins against her is False Symmetry, and Rendog doesn't even accept the duel, just letting her kill him instead. Just, just take it. Just, oh, I can just know, have just, it. Just, just do what you gotta do. Oh, Get it perfect. over and done with, please. Perfect. Do you have to use a wooden sword? It takes forever. <laughs> yeah, no, oh. I have cool glasses. Look at me. The heads are for the state quest anyway, so those will come back to him. Also, we were definitely going to pull some Highlander on him if he accepted and lost, claiming Jem as a new ruler and all that, so good on him thinking ahead. No pun intended, for once. Well, good luck to Jem not having her head chewed out with that amount of unstripped birch logs in a build. The Wood Elf Castle keeps inching closer to completion, and this time the inch is a rising spire with a tiny crown of its own. Good thing she got the netherite boots in this episode. The fall from this can't be good for your toes. Because this this is a mob. Always the possibility that this could actually be a mob farm. This seems to be functional. Okay, um... <laughs> Something tells me it might be working. This is cool. And finally, there's a Zuma Void who has plans and even ideas, but the frogs just would not waddle fast enough for him to cram them into this week. Something to do with the make a totally free shop has him on the roof of the nether, trying to convince magma cubes that it's a good place to spawn. 
Well, the powdered snow takes care of that, and breaking the magma cubes into the tiny ones. It helps that he stashed some frog spawn in just the right place, and now has a frog of every type on an intersection of the three biomes. Now once they stop spinning, we'll have frog lights for days. So, not only do we not have to visit three different areas on the server, we now can set up a nether portal nearby and easily transport these together. Well, I say easily transport, but you know what I mean. And that's about it for this week's recap. Our writer is Loy XP, and my name is Pixel Riffs. Captions on this video were provided by Liara, who has the biggest brain and pulled the heist of a century on a hardcore server while everyone was looking. Watch Loy and Lee do crimes in HD by clicking the video on your screen right now. Don't forget to leave a like while you're still here and subscribe so you won't miss future recaps. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.